Welcome. Do you live in far northeast Ward 7? Have you experienced problems with flooding? Join us as we review the 2021 Silver Jackets Watts Branch Flood Risk Management Studies recommendations. But first, here are some actions you can take today to reduce risk. Number one, knowing where your property sits in the floodplain. Two, signing up for wireless emergency alerts. Three, creating a flood plan to keep you and your family or business safe during floods. Four, making sure you have flood insurance. Five, obtaining elevation certificates to understand your property's risk. And six, modifying your property to avoid damage from flooding. Many of these actions are discussed in detail in module two of this series. The Watts Branch Flood Risk Management Study, which is further described in parts one and two of this module, assessed flood risk in the neighborhoods surrounding the Watts Branch and modeled several flood risk reduction alternatives based on modeling results. No one solution will significantly reduce flood risk in the study area in the immediate future. However, various recommendations were provided throughout the report, which identified future initiatives that could be taken to collectively reduce flood risk and increase resiliency. The study outlines key short-term recommendations for the Silver Jackets team and district agencies over the next one to three years. First, it recommends continued communication with Watts Branch stakeholders to increase flood risk awareness and overall resilience. Second, it recommends supporting ongoing initiatives like Climate Ready DC to improve resilience while addressing the community's own needs and priorities. Third, DOEE should submit the revised flood mapping and modeling developed during the study to FEMA to replace the outdated 2010 maps and provide more accurate risk and flood insurance data. Fourth, the study recommends expanding building surveys and national flood insurance elevation certification efforts to help refine the understanding of flood risk to individual structures throughout the study area. This information can also be used by property owners to update flood insurance policies and inform future initiatives. Fifth, it's recommended that further refinements are made to the flood modeling through incorporation of the latest data and technologies available. New modeling conducted during the study used updated methodologies and data, which produced large changes in flood risk maps to further improve the flood model. Stormwater pipe data from partner agencies in combination with physical surveys should be evaluated to better understand flood risk. Finally, the Watts Branch Flood Risk Management Study recommends leveraging existing local and federal programs for implementation of flood intervention strategies. During the study, the Silver Jackets team worked closely with the Georgetown University Climate Center to develop a policy matrix, which provides a series of recommended activities aimed at reducing flooding and its impact within the Watts Branch by taking advantage of existing policy initiatives and programs. The team also identified a list of existing local and federal programs that could provide a good starting point for property owners and a district to obtain funding for future flood risk management measures. Longer term recommendations identified by the study are focused on actions for the district government over the next three to five years and include first conducting a more focused cloud burst management study, which considers combinations of blue green infrastructure measures throughout neighborhoods surrounding the Watts branch. The Cloudburst concept plan, described in Module 4.2, showed that if blue-green infrastructure were implemented throughout the Watts branch, watershed flood risk could be substantially reduced. However, the high costs and long implementation timeframes make it necessary to closely work with stakeholders and prioritize high-risk areas. Although Cloudburst features are expensive, they provide substantial environmental and recreational co-benefits, such as improved water quality, and the creation of community gathering areas in the absence of a flood event. Second, improving flood warning capabilities within the watershed. Flooding in the Watts Branch watershed tends to be flashy in nature, meaning that when it happens, it happens quickly with little warning time. Current National Weather Service flood warnings transmitted to mobile devices and through radio and other media cover large regions to make flood warnings faster and more responsive to local conditions. Improvements to the stream gauge network can be considered, as well as other warning alert systems. 
Third, the study recommends a detailed non-structural flood proofing assessment study. Considerable flood risk reduction benefits were identified based on the high level assessment conducted throughout the watershed. A detailed non-structural flood proofing assessment study would include refined data collection of structure elevation data, site visits, and coordination with property owners and renters. These data would help determine the feasibility of non-structural flood proofing alternatives. Finally, the preliminary nature of concept designs developed during the study requires a more detailed analysis of whether combinations of larger infrastructure projects and non-structural measures could provide even greater flood reduction benefits. The analysis would also provide a better understanding of the true cost of implementing a variety of measures under different scenarios. Implementation of flood risk management alternatives would require buy-in from local stakeholders. The district is committed to working with community leaders to come up with the best approach. And the purpose of these video modules is to increase community engagement throughout the study. The team has been involved in various outreach efforts as well. In 2017, DOEE and Georgetown University organized site visits with local community leaders and Silver Jackets partners to help better understand the study area and Watts Branch stream. In 2018, the DC Silver Jackets hosted the DC Denmark Exchange at the Historic Riverside Center across from Marvin Gaye Park. Private partners and officials from the Danish Embassy and the City of Copenhagen, which is regarded as a leader in cloudburst management practices, came together with DC Silver Jackets, partner agencies, and community members to discuss opportunities for implementing cloudburst features throughout the Watts Branch watershed between 2017 and 2018. DC Silver Jackets team members participated in meetings with the DOEE-sponsored Equity Advisory Group, or EAG. The EAG was formed to develop recommendations on how to implement the district's climate adaptation and mitigation plans while addressing the community's top socioeconomic priorities. The Silver Jackets team shared flood maps with EAG members and also presented them to local residents at H.D. Woodson High School for Ward 7 Day and other advisory neighborhood commission meetings. In 2019, the team provided updated flood models and maps for DOEE's High Watermark Campaign. This led to the construction of a high watermark structure in the floodplain area of Marvin Gaye Park to help increase flood risk awareness. Going forward, your continued support and buy-in will be essential to the successful implementation of future flood risk management efforts. Thank you for your time. Understanding options for future investments to reduce Watts Branch flood risk means you're well equipped to get involved. Add your voice to the decision-making process. Help your community and the district government make sound, informed, risk-ready decisions on infrastructure investments. Contact us if you want to learn more or get involved at floodrisk at dc.gov.